The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Everybody and welcome back to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy back once again for Stars and Strikes Doubles semifinal Sunday. And that means we're down to just three teams remaining in our doubles format. And we've got a team uh, coming back from last week, last week looking to try and make it two in a row. Yeah, it's uh, been a difficult thing to do lately in yeah. the doubles, um, but uh, they're capable of doing it. But we got a tough team standing in their way. All right, let's meet our two teams. First of all, our returning champions got a victory last week. The number three seeded team from Warren, Massachusetts, Phil Clough, and his partner from Natick, Mass, Tom O'Brien. Okay, and uh, Phil comes in averaging 114. His roll-off score 672. Tom O'Brien 127. His roll-off score 647. And again, last week, uh, Phil and Tom got together for a 380 to knock off Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley, who scored a 362. So Phil and Tom today will try and make it two wins in a row, and they will try and do so against our number two seeded team from Biddeford, Maine, Mike O'Brien, and his partner from Rochester, New Hampshire, Ron Root. Uh, both of us, both bowlers, been with us before. Mike's been a long time. He averages 126, 684 for uh, his roll-off score. Ron Root 122 and 646. And of course, the winning team from today's show will move on to the championship match next Sunday against our top-seeded team, Dan Broder and Peter Pereira. But right now, they're thinking about this one, and of course, uh, trying to move on to that next series, that next show, because of course, the winner of next week's show gets into the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions. We've got three strings of men's scotch, uh, men's scotch doubles format, and we're going to get it started all after these messages. Don't go away. Semi-final week, Stars and Strikes Doubles. Our first week in this series was won by Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley, who threw an outstanding 408. Last week, though, they were knocked off by Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. So those two gentlemen will face our number two seeded team, Mike O'Brien and Ron Root, today. And the winners of this match come back next week to try and uh, knock off our number one seeded team, Dan Broder and Peter Pereira. You're looking at big left-hander Tom O'Brien. Get this match started. Tom opens up with a seven pin drop, the one, three, and seven left. And he's off target, <laughs> and it doesn't come back for him. the head pin again and what a mess the one the four seven eight or uh, seven nine and ten but he's got some help behind the head pin mm. ooh and it's a six box so a 15 start. And now Mike O'Brien. No relation. Those of you with outstanding memories may remember <laughs> Mike's appearance last time uh, on the show. It was a long time ago. Back in July of 1984. First summer we were on the air. And oh, he nice a spare mark. in the first. I bet you if we asked Mike about it, he'd remember. <laughs> <laughs> Here you see a replay of 3, 6, 10, and then finally the 7. It was July 29th, 1984. Whoa! Well, he hasn't forgotten what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and he bowled a fellow called Peter Flynn. Yep. And, uh, Peter, the previous week, had 442, so you figure he's going to cool off a little bit. Well, he did against Mike, but he owned, uh, he cooled off to the point of uh, 433, <laughs> so, and Mike had a 352, so I'm sure he remembers that. Well, he starts spare strike, and Phil Clough almost converting the 7-8 with no wood. Actually, Peter had quite an amazing run that summer. He went 459, 442, 433 in order. 
Mike O'Brien came in that summer with uh, that series with the number one seed, but was unable to overcome Peter Flynn. Phil Clough now in the fourth, and that should be a strike. It is. No way that pin would stay up. Just a matter of time before that six pin went down. Here comes some, here comes the cavalry to the rescue, knocking it down. Their first mark of the match, and first look at Ron Root. Ron trying to coax that seven pin over. And this team of Mike O'Brien and Ron Root, both having uh, the fact in common that they haven't been here in quite some time. Uh, last time Ron Root was here was back in March of 87. He won two matches before losing by two pins to Bill Coffold. He beat Skip Goddard and Bobby Clark his first two weeks. Half Worcester left. Oh, yes. Boy, that went down quick. Converting the half Worcester. Well, that was a strike <laughs> ball, basically. Wow, second ball strike you heard Ron say, and that's exactly <laughs> what Doug said. Just like a strike ball. And Tom O'Brien filling the spare left by his partner, or strike, I should say. Mm, no. <laughs> Short pin. Two shots at it. Fifty-three half for the team. Tom doesn't waste too much time between shots. Now it's going to have the two, four, six, ten. Delicate shot needs to be well. Ideally, cut the two pin over. And he'll take two for the nine box. And now Mike O'Brien to work on a spare. I asked Mike before the show what, what he's been doing the last seven years, <laughs> seven and a half years since we saw him last. Oh, there's another big well, strike. Boy, he has, he has been practicing one thing that he's been doing apparently. Wow, that's two strikes for Mike already. Big back swing and generates a lot of speed. That time he missed to the left. One thing, uh, Mike and his wife Melissa have two children now. Just missing a spare. Five-year-old Katie and a year and a half Christy. Mike works as a machinist, does a lot of his bowling at Vacation Land. And that's his first open box of the day. And very quickly, they have a 35-pin advantage after six frames. Phil Clough looking for a little help. The diamond turns into the triangle. Well, piece of wood nestled against the two pin. Let's see what happens. You sweep it across. Uh, Needs some little help. Kind of. <laughs> Oh, it's a two pin go right to the sidewall. Finally comes back and kicks the second piece of wood to knock down the four. That was in the pocket, but. Oh, oh my. Tough break on the eight pin. Yeah, it slid that one right over. Seven pin drop on the spare. It would have been a tough shot even without the eight pin sliding over. So it's a nine, and 88 through eight. Michael Bryan and Ron Root already at 97 through six. Ron upset with himself with that delivery, pulled it to the left.
Nine bucks. 106, 27 pin advantage now for Mike O'Brien and Ron Root. Ron also works as a machine operator. So I guess he and his partner have a little uh, shop talk in common. <laughs> Ron and his wife Cheryl have uh, two sons, 17-year-old Ronnie and 14-year-old Ryan, as he picks up the spare in the eighth. Ron does most of his bowling at the Bowl Away in Rochester and at the Dover Bowling Center. Tom O'Brien now looking to get something started for his team. Both of those houses are members of the New Hampshire Cannabis Bowling Association. Spare for Tom. Yes, without whose help, these two programs don't exist. A lot goes on behind the scenes that you don't really realize, uh, probably watching the program week to week, but the roll-offs and all the uh, ancillary details of the program, a lot of them handled by the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And of course, all you have to do if you want to try out for the program is, oh, how about that for a spare? Nicely done. Let's take another look at that one. All you have to do if, uh, if you want to participate on the program, just find out at your local New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association member house when their next TV50 roll-off is and enter it. It doesn't cost any more than it would cost you if you were just going to bowl the strings. So it's basically, uh, there's no entry fee or whatever, you just pay for the bowling. And uh, if you finish in the top five, you'll move on to the final roll-off, which is in essence a statewide roll-off, and then the top finishers there advance here to the program. Four horsemen left for Mike O'Brien. One, two, four, seven. Piece of wood in behind those four. On the outside. Yes. Oh. Boy, Mike has really been on fire. He's got four marks in the five boxes he's thrown so far. Six fill. And a challenging leave. Right through the middle. Well, the team of Mike O'Brien and Ron Root will have the lead after game one. As they combine to throw an outstanding 145. So it'll be a 24 pin lead for Mike O'Brien and Ron Root. Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien with some catching up to do. Two games left, though, plenty of time, and we'll be back with game two in a minute. Ron Root will start things off in the middle string. Ron from Rochester, New Hampshire, and it's coming back. He'll leave the three pin. Bears it up. Let's talk a little bit about Ron's style, uh, Dan, because it is a stand-up style. Yes, it certainly is. And he almost drives that ball into the floor a little bit, but as long as I've known Ron, and it's been a long time, <laughs> hasn't changed much in his style. He's right up straight at the point of release, but gets the job done. Nice fellow, too. Had a lot of fun with Ron over the years. Looking for two in a row. Nope. Surprised me when you said he had a 17-year-old son because it seems like it was only yesterday that uh, children were real small. <laughs> well, you should know about how fast that all happens. I mean, you've got a daughter getting married. Engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I hope she doesn't hear that. <laughs> uh, well, I neglected to mention it the last time we were on, but congratulations to uh, Tanya and Pat. Right. Yeah, he's, a, he's a good boy. And of course, being my daughter, she's a great kid, so. <laughs> Well, 
<laughs> Tom O'Brien directing traffic here. All right, get over. Come on, line up wood. <laughs> Phil's just bowling. Tom's doing all the hard work. He's going to play the wood. Uh, ooh, I thought he was too high. Two in a row for Phil Clough. Back to Mike O'Brien, who has really been hot so far. He's thrown two strikes already. Has four marks overall for the team. Michael move over to lane 31 after the 10 box. Off the head pin, but not so bad. The 10 pin will not go down, but there's plenty of wood down there. One in the 10. Catch the head pin, and he's got a shot at making it, and that he does. You see him just catch the head pin, and the wood does the rest of the damage. I mentioned a couple people from Bow, New Hampshire, that were in the audience today Bob and Joan Snell. First time they say they watch the show every, every week, but came down for one of the tapings, and if you have nothing to do this afternoon, I believe we're uh, taping again. Yes, we are. Uh, as we speak. We still have a couple hours to get here. We're going to be here until about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Taping men's singles as Tom O'Brien makes it three marks in a row for his team. A nice little conversion there. You see, he plays it on the inside and has the ball go down and take out the seven. If you can't make it today, we'll be back again on Tuesday the 21st of January of this month, and that will be a double show, but it'll be women. First time for the women's format on the doubles segment. And the same time for that. Oh, nice shot by Tom O'Brien. Four marks in a row for the team. Again, just a quick reminder, uh, same time for that doubles taping a week from Tuesday, January 21st. Starts about 9.30 in the morning, goes till four in the afternoon. And we'd love to see it here at Candlepin Stars and Strikes Doubles. We're going to take a timeout. We're at about the halfway point. Good one going. We'll have more in a minute. Well, this match is pretty close right now, within 10 pins. Depending on the fills of the spares, each team has left a spare in the fourth. Ron Root to work on his partner, Mike O'Brien's mark. Phil. Ferran has had a problem today. It's pulling the ball to the left on the first ball, especially. It's back on the head pin, but a little full. I try to grab two or three. Let's see if he can do some more damage on lane 31. And make it a nine. So a 59 half. Now remember the team of Michael Bryan and Ron Root had a 24 pin lead coming into this game, but that lead is being whittled down. Clough and Tom O'Brien have four marks in a row to start this second game. And Ron is going to have to work again on this one. Oh, oh wow. how about that? Oh, he missed it. He missed it, and it came back for him. Wow. As I say many times, there's two ways to play shots. The right way, in this case, Ron's way. And Ron's way worked out this time. Spare in the sixth. Well, the wood made the shot, really. If the wood isn't there, he doesn't make it. So the ball hit the wood first. How about this, though? Strike on spare as Phil Clough makes it five marks in a row for the team. Just barely touches the head pin. The two pin is left, and finally the two pin topples. As Doug said, five marks in a row. Off the head pin, hang on. Boy, not a bad leave. The one and the eight. And got a piece of wood directly behind the head pin. Another one back towards the eight pin. He's got a shot. Yes. Six in a row. And a 92 half 
with a spare up in the sixth for Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. And they have taken the lead now in the match by nine. Still though, both teams with a spare up in the sixth. Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> wow, just blew eight of the pins out of there and what does he leave himself? The seven and the nine. Almost an impossible shot. Nine bucks. Eighty six through seven. Decent game. However, his opponents have hundred and two already in the six, plus another ball coming. Probably try to catch a piece of the wood at the same time as he's hitting the head pin. And that'll give him two shots at the 10 pin, either the ball or the yeah. piece of wood. Oh boy. Mm. Came right in front of the 10 pin, hit the side wall and came back across. Never touched it. Tough break there. 10 bucks, so two opens. Let's see if Tom O'Brien can keep the string alive. Six marks already. Four spares, then a strike, and then another spare. Pretty oh, good ball. Right in there. Oh, oh ah. the 10 pin somehow stayed up. Looked like a strike for certain. 111 in the sixth. And make it seven marks in a row. Wow. That describes it all. Wow. <laughs> That's 11 marks in 17 boxes for the team of Clough and Tom O'Brien. That ball just turned a little bit at the end. Looked like it was going to go straight through the middle. And a similar break that uh, Mike O'Brien had. Pretty good ball going in, leaves eight, but a, almost an impossible spare leave. Oh. He snaps it across, <laughs> almost makes it. So what it benefited him there where the, was the piece of wood behind that pin. That's That'll, a nine. Yeah, even there with the uh, with this shot, Tom didn't take a lot of time to study it. He nope. just stepped up there and fired it. 138 through eight. As you see, they have completely wiped out that 24 pin deficit and now have the lead. En route. And that was a, a lob. lob. So Ron, that was a lob, so Ron will have to reset. It's a six drop, so this is now his second ball on a new rack of pins. Well, it might benefit a little bit. That was a tough spare leave he had. Let's see if he can just kind of shake it off, and course, this will be a spare if he were to knock them all down. And he'll take an eight bucks. Oh, nice ball that time for Ron. Leaves a solid four pin. Well, he doesn't waste any time. Picks the ball up and he's attacking him. It's right on it. Yes. Spare in the tenth. We'll stay right there and fill this spare. It's the only time our format kind of differs a little bit is when you throw the mark in the last frame of a game, you'll stay up there and fill it yourself. Pretty good looking fill, seven. So it'll be a 121, a two string total, 266. Can you imagine 266 and they're gonna find themselves behind. How much will depend on what Phil Clough does here in the ninth. Right in the pocket oh, again. A piece of wood on the left of the eight pin prevented that from being a strike. There was another piece of wood that was going to take the eight pin out and it was blocked. He's got and it. Phil spares it up. Nine marks, eight marks out of nine frames. Chance to get into the 170s here. He's right in the pocket oh. again. Oh. Wow. <laughs> this game's pretty easy, isn't it? 
<laughs> Tom has fun with this game. I'll say that. You hear him chirping, chirping at the woods and at the wood in the background. No, it's gotta be higher. No. A 167 for the team of Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. A two string total, 288. So the difference is 22 with one game to go. This could be a good finish, stick around. Phil Clough to start game three. He and his partner Tom O'Brien have that 22 pin lead after two games. And they elected to switch the order and have Phil bowl first. Yeah, Phil uh, caught fire a little bit in that second game of the eight marks they had in the string. Phil had five of them. He's looking at the 810, and I think if he can avoid the farthest piece of wood to the right, right, almost right down the center of the lane, he's got a shot. Yep. And he does. A little jumping wood never hurts. If it jumps in the right place. Right back in the pocket. A little light. It's a half dozen, but he leaves himself a tough spare leave. Five, seven, eight, nine. Well, he's got a chance. Ooh. Good try. Split the five and the nine. Twenty-five start for the team. Remember, they have a 22-pin lead coming in, as you see, in the lower left portion of the screen. So now, Mike O'Brien. Would like to start off the way he did the match. His partner Ron Root saying one hit pin to hit it means that, of course, the head pin. Ooh. Oh, do you believe that? He hit it. <laughs> Certainly did, and it jumped right up over the piece of wood, and the ball didn't even deflect off it. That was a tough break. Ten bucks. Oh, boy. Uh, it was a tough break. I think he Can got angry. Imagine? <laughs> There's a, another 10 pins extra there that he's not going to get because of the tough break on the two pins in the first frame. No doubt about that strike, though. Well, the high-low jack, the 1710. Much easier with wood. But not that easy. <laughs> it's a nine box. Still there. Head pin will go. And a nine box. Ron Root, remember, working on a strike here. With the team trailing. would like a double. Well, try again, he pulled to the left. Ooh, that close to another mark. Nine fill. They picked up five. 
They now trail by 17. Oh my. The three pin is now almost directly in front of the six. And it eliminates one of his options. He can't split it now. He's gonna have to go on the inside and hope the ball can carry him off into the wood. You can see, <laughs> see hmm. Ron kind of pull the wood back a little closer. It might be too far away for the ball to carry him off the three pin. Well, he's got the wood, but not the three pin. Now you can pick up another pin with all three of these. Oh, just two. We'll take a timeout. The lead remains at 17 for Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien with six boxes to go on Stars and Strikes doubles, and we'll return in a minute. Well, we have six boxes to go, and a tight match here. Really? Swing of two marks, one way or the other. Seventeen pin advantage for this gentleman, Phil Clough, and his partner Tom O'Brien. The presenting sponsor of Candlepin Stars and Strikes Doubles is Tri-State Megabucks. Pick up a ticket today. Tri-State Megabucks. Just imagine being rich. An eight box for Phil Clough having the bowlers stay on the same lane. So we've uh, gotten a little ahead of ourselves time-wise. Uh, everything but the three pin. Now with his ball, you gotta be very careful he doesn't cap the wood next to the three because it could deflect either way. Oh, just caught enough of the pin as well and got the spare. That's the 14th mark for the team of Clough and O'Brien. They had 14 last week in their win. Oh, Mike O'Brien right in the pocket. He had that ball come back just a little bit on him. This is an important frame because he's opposite an open frame. You have to deal with a spear already put up in the sixth. Next frame. Oh, he's too far to the right. Was and a that was a lob, so that'll be a nine box for Mike. Hey Mike, and time. Mike is Four. right through the middle this time. I have a feeling that that lob call may have cost him the spread eagle because it seemed like he really laid the ball down a little more than usual, and I think he just pulled it into the center of the pins and the spread eagle. So a chance for Tom O'Brien to build up a pretty good lead going into the last few frames. Tom will step over to lane 31. You see he's working on that spare in the sixth left by his partner, Phil Clough. 17 pin advantage, that's, that's two good marks. He can push it to three marks that his opponents are going to need, and he does just that. The lead now 25. And with the conversion of this, if he gets this, that means these opponents are going to have to, whoa, when by the ki wood kick forward, his opponents are going to have to mark out now, regardless of what he does in the spare. Right back in the pocket. Boy, surprisingly thin hit, leaving the triangle in the back. Five, eight, nine. Well, this open frame will leave room for Ron Root, because if Ron should put a couple of marks up there, make things interesting at the finish. As the lead is 20, 25 right now. Excellent.
actually on his approach, he's at last step, he's really fading to the left. That'll cause him to throw that ball to the left a lot of times. Seems to recover with that second ball, but the first ball, for the most part, has been to the left. Ten box, nice recovery. But the lead is now 32. He just plays the wood out in front for the 7, 8, and 10. Oh boy, Ugh. 8 and 10. He wants at least a piece of wood to stick around and give him some kind of chance. He's going to shoot right at the 8 pin, try to clip the wood. With the wood in the channel on the left, it could come out. Oh, he's too high. Oh, the ball almost came over there. That's going to make it tough. It's a 10 box, so the lead is 31. That'll give Phil Clough an opportunity to close this one out here. Four horsemen plus the nine pin in the back. Phil and Tom combined for a 380 last week. They've already topped that. Got 391 right now. Just thinking one more mark that he could lock them out. You never know. You've yet to have somebody throw that many strikes in a row on our show, but as long as the possibility exists. He wants that 10 pin to go down. And somehow it won't. There it Oh, goes. wow. <laughs> it looked like it was right on the edge of the lane, and that's what finally <laughs> sent it over. Uh, he's not going to have an easy shot. Well, maybe getting easier by the minute if the wood rolls back. He's going to have a clear shot at it now, it looks like. Appears to be anyways. Well, nice to shoot at this one with a 31-pin lead at any rate. Mm -hmm. Off the wood? No. Four oh one for Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. Which means that one thirty five would tie it, so basically it would take a few strikes. Four strikes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'll do it. More than four. Take five. Five. Plus a nine drop. No luck at all. Well, this means Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien will win their second in a row. And they'll get a crack at Dan Broder and Peter Pereira, our number one seeds next week for the big money and a chance to qualify for the doubles tournament of champions. And wouldn't you know, the proverbial strike in the 10th. <laughs> Just tripping the four pin. That looked like the ball that Mike was throwing earlier in the match. They're going to have a three string total that's not too shabby either, but it's just not going to be enough today. Oh. Spare on strike in the 10th. So a total of 116 and a 382 for the team of Mike O'Brien and Ron Root. But as I mentioned, not enough to beat Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien on this day. We'll talk with all the bowlers and preview next week's championship match in a minute.
here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, and uh, you know, we often talk about uh, how infrequent it is that uh, in this format you would get a team to throw a 400 triple, but now we've had two of them in the last three weeks. The final score of this one, once again, 401 to 382. Uh, Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien coming up with their second straight win, and we'll talk uh, more with them in a minute. But first of all, let's introduce our runners-up, Mike O'Brien and Ron Root. How about a big round of applause for them? as they will come up and accept uh, third place prize money of $250. Michael, good to see you again, and, uh, and Ron, the same to you. you. Turn around here so we can get you both on camera, and uh, we got the checks for you, and we get plaques for you as well from the NNR Trophy Company, and I know both of you uh, kind of have something in common. It's been a while for both of you, and, uh, boy, you started off uh, real well at the beginning. Yeah, it looked good, but uh, that second string seven mocks in a row was that put us behind the eight ball, I think. It is tough, uh, and even still, though, in the third game, uh, it just seems like the, the nature of Park Place Lanes, you still had a shot at it, but just not enough good things happened. Well, it's you got to hit the headpin, and I was mm -hmm. off the headpin all day, so can't complain, I guess. But Tom O'Brien and Phil are great, great bowlers, and they deserve to win. Well, now, we don't want you to wait so long, uh, you guys, before you come back and visit us again, all right? Well, hopefully it'll be this year. <laughs> all right, thanks very much, and congratulations again. Mike O'Brien and Ron Root. Thanks very much for coming, and uh, well, keep the applause going because we're going to bring up our winners now. We're going to bring up Tom O'Brien and Phil Clough, and uh, <laughs> we're going to switch the order here and uh, get everybody on camera and make sure we can see everybody. Tom and uh, and Phil, just a, a terrific, uh, you know, team effort there. You had things working, and uh, you were able to get the 400 triple. Yeah, like I said previous week, Phil's an outstanding candle pin bowler, and I knew he was going to come around sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And the way I started in the first string with the nine and a six box, I, that's not me at all. I mean, I'm here to help Phil win the championship, hopefully. And uh, the way I've been bowling the last couple of weeks, I am really haven't found my game yet. Well, now you, you changed uh, the order in that third game. Uh, Phil, you let off the third game. Uh, is that a, a part of the strategy, uh, just depending on who's going well and so on? Yeah, uh, we both figured I was... Uh, Bowling fairly well, so uh, I stayed in that position and uh, let off the last game. You made that decision, did you, Tom? I, I made that decision. Uh, I got to tell you, though, that Ron and Mike are outstanding Canlipin bowlers, and you know anybody who makes this show, you got to beat 72 guys, and anybody, mm -hmm. 10 guys who could beat 72 guys deserve yeah. to be on the yeah. show, and they just didn't get the breaks today. I watched Mike. I bowled next to him in the finals, and he's an outstanding young bowler, and he's going to be around for a long time, and Ron... You know, Ron's got that delivery, and, you know, he didn't get any breaks at all. And we snuck out a win. Well, you guys uh, get to go for the championship that you want so much. Uh, next week, uh, we'll have Dan Broder and uh, Pete Pereira ready to go against you. Yeah, we'll be here. All right, we're looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, all right. That's Tom O'Brien and Phil Clough for their second win in a row. And let's go over to the ladder and uh, set you all up for next week's championship week now. Of course, we'll have two championship matches for you next week, beginning at 12 noon. Here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, this is the way it'll line up. It'll be our number three seeded team, Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien, with a 380 and then a 401 back to back. And they will try and make it three in a row. And as they go for the championship against our top seeded team of uh, Dan Broder and Pete Pereira. Oh, it should be an interesting one because uh, Pete is first time with us. Dan Broder's been with us quite a few times, so kind of a mix of a veteran and a, and a rookie uh, against a veteran team. And uh, these guys are bowling real well, but I, I think Danny and uh, Pete are going to give them all they can handle. What do you think about the stra that strategy that we have with the, the change of the order? Uh, we've seen it used several times. It seems like the bowlers are not hesitant to, to change it up a well, little bit. The only bit. thing I disagree with, uh, with Tom was that he went to the veteran. He went to the to the older of the two statesmen there, and it was his idea that he'd go first because he wasn't sure the young guy could handle the heat at the end. <laughs> and as it turned out, uh, maybe he was right. Yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. He keeps referring to me as the old man, so I figure I have to get him back. All right, well, we're going to get back to uh, Candlebin Bowling next Sunday at 12 noon here on Stars and Strikes, of course, for the regular show, which will be mixed doubles, our championship match, and then at 1 o'clock next Sunday, it'll be our championship match here on Stars and Strikes doubles in the men's format. We'll be looking for another qualifying team to the Tournament of Champions. It'll be Dan Broder and Peter Pereira against Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. It should be a good week, and we'll be looking for you then. Until next Sunday at 12 noon, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 Sports crew, Doug Brown. Bye-bye, everybody.